di quella birra l'orrendo fuoco tutte le fibre marciano un po' e più spennila occhio fra poco così in cui mostro la spegnerò Hey everybody, and here we go with another episode of Eat My Pasta. Here we are at Sapori's again. So Dominic, what, what do you have in mind for us today? Well, we're going to go back to the old days with the grandma and grandpa. We're going to make pizza rustica. And rustica means rustic. I mean, we make this on a holiday, but you could make it any time. It's, uh, you know, if you have family over or you just, uh, you, you, know, you know, entertaining people, it's something nice. You could eat it cold. Uh, we, we, you know, you make it the day before, two days before, you eat it cold it's and you slice it up with a, the two days we say eat it with that and Prosecco and you don't need nothing else, just nice good time with champagne the family here. or friends, so <laughs> it's really not that hard to make, it's uh, easy and it, you know, we use all the best ingredients, so uh, we use prosciutto, sobrasada, the regatta, basket cheese, which is fresh cheese, uh, we use some uh, this is a, a little soft provolone. Oh. It, yeah, it uh, gives it a little bite, a little Romano cheese, not too much, or Parmesan, and uh, some eggs, and then we bake it. And uh, we use pizza dough because my grandma, always, when she made the bread, whatever was left over, a little bit, we saved it, and we put whatever we added in the pantry, that's what become rustic, so. Beautiful. Here we go, so, but it's really delicious, and we sell this on holiday, sometimes you around if you want to order, so. Uh, you could, some people make different pastries, stuff and make it different, but I'm going back to tradition. That's why we call it rustic. Because oh, we utilize what we had at the time. So. And it's something you could do with your family, exactly. like on a Sunday or something. Right, and if you have whatever left over, we'll, we'll use some stuff. To, my grandma used to put whatever. She used to make the cross, put stuff, some cheese skins and prosciutto. A piece of prosciutto, wrap it up and throw it in there, and then we just ate it. It was, uh, it was, it was good, fun. Too. Oh my <laughs> gosh! So this is a pizza dough. You could make your own, or you could uh, buy it, whatever you want. We have pizza dough here. Yeah, we have pizza dough. We just, we just stretch it. It's, it's easy. If you, if you want to use a, a rolling pin, you can use a rolling pin. It's uh, it's easy to do, and I want to make it thin. You don't want to make it too thick, because and you want to taste the cheese and everything else. I like it thin. So with this, you could make four or two of them. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, it depends on the, uh, what kind of a Size pan of you pan use. You See, we use we found they here at the store that we use this. My grandma used to have a big one, or she used to have a clay one. So whatever, it's easy for you and. It doesn't matter, it's use discretion, you use whatever you, you want to make. Okay, so we're stretching a pizza dough here. Like I said, we may want to make it thin. Looks like you've done that before. A few times. <laughs> but like I said, if you don't want to do that, you can use a rolling pin, it's no big deal. You're and just stretching the... Yeah, you just, it. you roll it, you throw it on your hand and you pull a little bit. And, you keep your hand like this, this way you don't poke holes in there. Sometimes we'll do, uh, next show maybe we'll do a pizza or something. Sure. We the last show we did the pizza with the truffles, that was oh amazing. Oh my gosh. Amazing. So this is, this is about right. And we, like I said, we're only going to use like half of it. Let me get a knife. Now, do you use an unoiled? You've got to oil that? No, I'm going to, actually, not even oil. We're going to use, uh, I have it right here. We're going to use uh, shortening. Oh. Uh, oh, there it is. <laughs> right in front of my eyes. <laughs> now, with this, we'll do something else. Give you some ideas. We'll put this on the side for now. And we get the shortening, and we just... Now, if you don't have shortening, they could use oil or... You could use oil. It just depends on what kind of oil. You want to use the oil that's got an eye resistant. So this way, one, I found this to one burn on you. Ah. And the, the dough gets dark. So I find that shortening works best. But if you want to use vegetable oil and whatever, that's, that's, that's all, all well and good. I found this over the years. That works the best. Well, be honest with you. 
that's all we you know, we used to make our own exactly. lard in Italy, so that's all we we use. So I'm so used to using this that it's a way of life. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, my great grandma was a one oh one and nine months, so I'm not gonna argue with tradition. So holy mackerel. <laughs> so anyway, we get this, we put it in here, and we just let it hang and then now we we wait for the put the ingredients in there. And then whatever you got left over, we'll uh, we'll make something with it. So this is mostly prep. Yes. So it's not, in, and then the cooking process, you just put it in the oven. That's and correct. Ding, 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 you're done. So now, the the mix. There's a lot of people use different stock, pepperoni, sausage, but uh, in my uh, region, we use the the basics. We use blue sugar, all the stuff that we had in the house. So. We had nice prosciutto, so I got some nice. You put as much as you want, but Is that you want to make it. Pound, yeah, pound? it's about half a pound. You don't want to be stingy because we're making a nice pie, about and it feeds about. You could feed about. This will feed. You could give some to your friends. It feeds about ten, twelve people. Oh, so yeah. it's so, very rich. So you want to make not too thin and not too thick. So make it just right. Yeah. So. If this is the prosciutto, it's nice and lean. Is that a pommy or? Yeah, this is important, prosciutto di parma. And I just take, make little pieces like this. Some people, like I said, if you gotta make it, just use the best ingredients. Why, uh, why waste your time and the energy? What's the old saying? Garbage in, garbage out. Yeah, yeah. that's it. So you make it, you, so you spend a little more if you're gonna make it. But at least you're eating good stuff it's, instead of like I see some people use pepperoni, ham, and sausage. Okay, so this is the prosciutto. Then we put the sobresad. This is a nice sobresad. I slice it long way. And you have so this here as well, right? Yes, we have good sobresad here. Look at how beautiful that is. Look at that, Pete. That is beautiful. It's nice and lean. Mm -hmm. So we cut this, same thing as the prosciutto. Always be careful not to cut your finger and oh, have for that sure. extra meat. <laughs> Especially with this uh, sharp yeah, knife. Yeah, I'm glad you're cutting it, not me. So this is, like I said, I like the, they have plenty of meat in there. This is what, when you eat it, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, if you gotta make it, you don't make it that often. So if you make it, like I said, make it best. There we go. I'm gonna put the whole thing in there. And we'll cut the rest of it. There we go. And this is this provolone is delicious. It's a this is a, That's a soft provolone? Yeah, oh, yeah, soft provolone. Oh. Is there it's something only, different in an aging process with that or well it's not as sharp, it's a different milk and it's it's really mild. I'll let you taste it. Oh, you could call it. Oh, we could use it. We use it soft provolone. On Italy, we used to use provola, which is dry mozzarella, but uh, you know, ten days. This way, it doesn't have that much moisture, but it still retains a nice. Uh, it melts perfect. So this is all mixed together. I'm gonna put a little cheese in there. But this way, they don't stick. They don't glum together. Oh, that's a pretty good idea. And it's you gotta use the cheese here anyway, so so that takes you there. Now this is the cheese. It's oh look at that. Yeah, you could use this or you could use provola. Some people use a smoke provola. I don't know about the smoke, but if that's what you want to use, you know, I'm not gonna say anything. It works for you. You like it? It's all good. And this is about a, it's about a half a pound that you want to use. If you want to use a little more, it's not going to kill you or change anything. So it's so. kind of like a, a, a quiche almost. Yeah, it's a and little Italian, different. Yeah. yeah, it's a different, it's more rich. Well, with the regatta and yeah. the, the basket you could, cheese. You could eat the, this and it stays for a week in the refrigerator. You could freeze it, it freezes well if you want to freeze it. So you have to, no problem there. Makes a great gift around the holidays. Oh, as well. for sure. <laughs> you show up at somebody's house, bring one of them. You'll be invited back. That's it. Then the Prosecco. Oh, I gotta tell you, 
I was in Italy and like every day we had Prosecco. <laughs> At 10 o'clock in the morning, we go to the bar with my cousin, he goes, we're going to have a oh, Prosecco, okay, Prosecco. And, uh, well, you know, give us something, a pizza just came in, I just made it. Okay, so we're at 10 o'clock, we have a Prosecco and pizza. Which... And at 1 o'clock, you're taking a nap. No, at 1 o'clock, we did it again. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, this is more than, the extra, I'm so used to making two of them, but that's fine. So, this is at about a pound of regatta. We're gonna throw it in there. And this is the basket cheese I was telling you about. If time, uh, next time we do a show, I'm gonna show you. With this, it's awesome just to eat it like this. You could this, you slice it up. I'll show you the texture. Yeah, it looks really creamy. And you could put it on, uh, you could put it, if you want to, you could put it on, on, a, on a piece of chocolate square and drizzle with some um, oh, honey or you could just uh, you could fry it you know put a piece of bread you could bake it you could uh, my grandmother used to make a little pasta square pasta throw this on with a uh, sauteed onion and the pasta the, the water from the pasta it's delicious I have to make that one yeah we'll do this also. in a yeah. bite this you could just eat it like that it's 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 a uh, it's a uh, basket cheese a combination between mozzarella and the regatta. It's, it's really delicious. We'll, we'll do this another time. But anyway, so this is this. Is this. Now we're going to put, uh, I put a little bit of uh, nutmeg, little black pepper. As, as you notice, I don't use no salt because the prosciutto and the supersada has got plenty of salt in there. So what we're gonna do, and plus the little Romano cheese and or Parmesan, but I have a cup or a cup. Put four eggs. It does look like it's gonna be rich. Oh, this is gonna this will make about one and a half. But if you have a leftover, you could freeze the ingredients, and then the next time you want to make it, you already have the ingredients done, so well, you don't have to go crazy. Just pick up the pizza dough. And that's it. So now I'm going to put, uh, dry my hands. I'm going to put some gloves on. And we're going to squish it all up. At home, you just wash your hands and yes. push it up and let the kids uh, take their anger out or whatever. <laughs> so whatever works, is you let fun. So this. Yeah, that is a lot of filling in there. It is. But you could, do, you could do make a little one, like you said, you could make little portions with it. So you could make little ones, like a little type of calzone, and it'll be just as well, it'll be just as good. Rainy day or Sunday, you could make like a dozen of them. And well, that's uh, a good idea as well. And you'll be, uh, it's really tasty. In Italy, they call this gashadil. They do the same basic thing, but they make like small ones, like this. Oh. It's so good, hot. It's like as soon as they come out, I just eat. Or you could just rewarm them. They really so the kasha deal. It's the same principle, but you make maybe we'll make a couple of small ones just to to give you an idea. But as you can see, this is nice and rich. That's a pretty good workout there. And you notice, like I said, no salt, no no parsley, no nothing. You just you want to savor the prosciutto. The, the basket cheese and everything else. So that's about done. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this in here. And what you do is you just hold this and you just slowly let it take its form. This is a nice Maybe I'll save some to make a little, some little ones. So, but this is perfect. And like I said, you could use any pen you want, any shape you want. There you work. There you go. Not that hard to make. No, it's not hard at all. Huh? Do you do it just flat, or do you bevel it a little bit? You could any way you want. It doesn't matter. So. So now, I, I push this inside. 
some of them I cut off because I don't want too much on the top so you can see it, this is too much too much dough I don't want all this dough on the top of this we use it for something else so it's not a total waste and you want it to be my grandma used to make, we put D on on the top, so used to make little D's and put it on the top. Oh, how cute. <laughs> <laughs> so some people put egg white but or egg yolk. I found that just put a little lard on it, it makes it nice and, uh, and uh, crunchy, keeps the color. Sometimes the red gets a little, I just love this shortening, so. And this is done. I mean, you could, like I said, some people, if you got time, you could, uh, you know, Decorate. you could put decoration on it or whatever you. I mean, this is it's it's. It's your project. You it's your you project. Yeah. You see what? You could put uh, stars. You could put people's name on it, whatever. So I'm just giving you some, throwing some stuff up there. So this is ready to go. They put it in the oven. About 375, 400, about an hour and a half. Then you uncover it and you, then you leave it another 15, 20 minutes. Depends on your oven. So, so if you put a toothpick in there to, to check if it's dry or whatever. And then take it out. What I do is about 10 minutes later, I, I flip it upside down. This way the, the bottom doesn't get soggy. And uh, put aluminum foil on it. Then we bake it. And then you really should eat this cold or warm the, the best. It tastes better. You cover it up this way. Plus it keeps your consistency if it's too yes. hot. Yeah. And this is it. We're going to put this in the oven for about an hour and a half and we'll see the, the, the result product. It's, and with this, like I was saying before, in Italy we make a cacciatile and it's like a triangle. Put a little bit. I think that's a divine idea, the little ones. Yeah, I, the, and then we have uh, the cutter, make it nice and uh, with the round edges. But this is what they call it, cachetiel, and it's, oh, I love these oh, little Oh, look things. at how cute. And these, like I said, you could freeze these. Could you deep fry that as well? You could. Uh, but I think baked because because of the cheese ingredients yeah, inside. Yeah, yeah, the, the ingredients. So baking, you if you want to deep fry, but put it in there together. So, and I guess the kids can eat a snack or some come over. It's and it's idea. different from a calzone. But it's got it's got all these ingredients. It's different. That's why they, we you know we call it the cashier So we bake these. They really. And then you know what? So if you have kids or somebody, let them. Let them do it. You make a part of this. You'd be surprised. You know, you make memories with the family. You can make them any shape you want, and just can make a few more to give you an idea. And then you take a, you you know, you take it from there. With these little things, you don't waste them. You could just you tie them like this, and you bake them, and you make some garlic knots. You could roll them up in the. I, I, not for time's sake, but you could chop this up, some uh, sun-dried tomato, some, uh, or maybe we'll make one. I love sun-dried tomatoes. Some That's olives, you got a nice combination. Especially like this, you know, like especially in the winter time or even in the summertime, you could eat it up outside. Not to put a little oil in here, as the oil. Put a little oil here. Put a little Parmesan provolone in there. It's a sharp provolone. Or any cheese that you have, just to give it a little, a little zip. A <laughs> little zip, I like that. Uh, make it simple. So I'm gonna put this like this. 
I'm just throwing ideas, whatever you want to put in there. Good way to use the excess dough. Anything. You, if sure. you don't, whatever yeah. you're going to put in there, you want to put mushroom, you can just put pepperoni. Okay, so we put this. Uh, give me one of those pans over there. That's it. Beautiful. Put this over here. Now we put a little oil on it, and then just to put a little grated cheese on the top. When the grated cheese bakes, it gets nice and crispy. And just a little black pepper, just to And, and, the, and the, just a symbol like the, like that, just uh, you know, to give you, to you yeah, don't waste anything. I, I, it's pretty much the same, but you got three different. Uh, yeah, you you, you, you don't yeah. waste anything. So. Exactly. Is that those garlic, those nuts, they pop off nice, and you don't, you know, you'd be surprised. You, you have a snack with the family, or whatever. You. There we go. I think we can make one more of these. Yeah. Don't like to waste them. There we go. And then all this, and now you can make them. So we'll put this on the side for now. So that's just it to give you some uh, idea here. You can put some of these on the top. Who as well goes gets nice and crispy, and you'd be surprised how good these are. So here we are. We're gonna bake these, and then we're gonna show you. And uh, just uh, we're trying to make it easier. It gives you encouragement not to worry about oh, it's too hard, and this is some recipe really crazy. And this is basic stuff that family tradition you could start and then been carry on in my family, my great grandmother on. So. Gonna bake these and try them, so here we are. Okay, Dom, so we made the pizza rustica and some other things are still in the oven. What else you got for us? Okay, Codeguino. People are gonna say, what is Codeguino? Codeguino, we make it all year round, mainly on uh, Carnevale, which is Mardi Gras, which is a sausage with loin of pork, butts, and then what we do is we get pig skin, we boil it, and we blend it oh. in there. But this the pig skin is already cooked. So and then we, we you know we freeze it or we maintain the refrigerator. We boil it and that's what it looks like. It's I can't ex explain it uh, the eat. This you could after you boil it, you could put it in the sauce, you could put it in in lentil, make lentil soup, you could throw oh, it in there. I bet the pig skin makes it a little oh, sweet. Uh, once you taste it, you'll, you'll, you'll see it. But uh, the other one, the other way that it was so easy, and it's, it's my, 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 we made it with uh, escarole and uh, beans. So we start up with a little olive oil. We chop a little bit of onion. Okay, we have the garlic. Uh, just had it anyway. Oh, here's a garlic. Get the garlic. Just smash it up. There you go. Put the escarole in there. Put a little bit of water in there, baby. That's it. Put a little bit of water to just get some. Uh, and we'll just let this blend. And you can make this as a side dish. And it cooks one, two, three. You can use water or chicken broth, but I like water because we retain the. Uh, and you don't have to cook it that long. Then you put some beans. 
Now these, believe it or not, these beans, my, my mother, she dries it, she, cures, she um, puts them in the water, soak them overnight, she boils them, then she puts them in the jar, and they last like six, seven months. Really? Yeah. And what a difference you, you, you taste it because... They're, they're dry. Yeah, they're dry and then we... They dry, you hydrate. soak them every night, and then you boil them the next day, but now you rinse them out, you boil them by the half hour or 45 minutes, then she puts them in a, in a jar and, and she keeps them. Okay, so this is just about done. Now we put the kodigin in there. We're going to save some so we could just taste it. You want to taste it? You want to wait? You want to wait? It's, it's, see the big skin in there? And it's loin of pork. Yeah, box. that's amazing. Oh. <laughs> and this is what we said this on carne mare. Put a little bit of pepper. Some more olive oil. Oh, that's pretty easy to do. And this is great for that's for even this, a dish too. Oh, it's. Uh, I mean, I love this. I grew up with this stuff. We take it for granted. Now that you know the people that I they used to make it, they're not around anymore. I make it and they bring back memory. But so good again. It's so delicious. And even in the sauce, you put this in the red sauce. It's it's uh, to die for. It's really it's really great. Let me put this in there. Can And you got kodigin with escarole and, and, uh, and beans. Now we just put a little more oil on it. Yeah, it's got beautiful color. And that's it. You got this. Now you put this with lentil, the kodigin. Uh, I, I can't tell you how, how good it is. So, And this, some of them, we, we're going to just eat it like this. I can't explain what a different. We sell them here, so if you want to buy them, you boil them, put them in the sauce. They're delicious. Put them in the red I'm gonna sauce. try that with the pigskin in there. It's it's delicious. So, so here we are. Two more ideas for carnivale, which is Mardi Gras, and now we're gonna get the pizza rusica out and we show whatever everything that we make. Okay, Dominic. So that's out of the oven. Let's see what we yeah, got here. Yeah, this cooled really off. Cool. This cooled off. Oh, beautiful. And we put the, the knife all around to make sure that. Not sticking. Come on, baby. <laughs> there you go. Ah, how beautiful. Oh, here we go. There it is. Now we this cooled off. This we cooled off about a few hours. Now we cut it just to show. Now we're going to cut a little. That's a hearty piece right there. And this, like I said, you can see the sobosa, the brisciotte, the provolone, and with a little, with wine, prosecco, some great friends. Mm. The fruit of your labor right there. Delicious. We enjoy to preparing this for you. We made it easy. I hope you give it a try. And uh, yeah. all of this stuff is available here to go to Gin and the Pizza Rustic if you don't want to make it. So. It looks like it brings us to another close to eat my pasta. Yes, it does. So thank you all for letting us in your living room and uh, letting Dominic cook for you. Thank Thanks. you. God bless you. Thank you. Keep my love here